Hi there, Eric Packer, New Zealand naturopath, doing another video. This time we're going to do a, a, a bit of a broad sort of a topic video on stool testing. So here's what I've learned after doing thousands of stool tests. I've done a lot of stool tests, many, many, many stool tests over the years, particularly uh, more so the last five years than any other time that I've seen people. Lights a bit bright, isn't it? Um, so after doing so many stool tests, I've worked out a couple of interesting things which I'd like to explain to you all out there. Very interesting things. So this is an example of doctor's data stool test I've got here in front of me. And um, don't worry, you can't see the person's name. But what you can see is you can see columns here, right? You can see columns. You can see the green column, the yellow column, and the red column. I like working with doctor's data. I used to work with Genova Diagnostics um, in the States, formerly called Great Smokies Diagnostic Labs. But um, I absolutely believe that this particular lab is the best in the world for the type of test that they do, mainly because of their investment, how much money they've spent in their lab, um, in their lab processes, the amount of PhDs they have on staff. And the sheer technology increase every year, how they just spend more money and keep abreast with all the latest trends and developments uh, in the laboratory. Um, incredible lab. But not only that, the main thing is why I really believe stool testing is so valid for people is because of the outcomes I see consistently with client after client after client. Stool testing is expensive. You know, you're looking at anywhere, depending where you live, from 350 up to 500 US dollars depending where you live, because you know, for freight sometimes. But I can tell you now, in so many cases, the person has said to me, I'm so annoyed that I never had this test done many years prior, because it would have saved me a lot of grief and agony and misery. So, so many doctors don't do stool testing, either through lack of knowledge, or believing that the, the client can't afford that kind of money. I believe that people can't afford to stay yeah, uh, sick for so long. I mean, why would you want to have a crappy state of health? Once you've done a stool test, you've got a baseline. So you've got a good understanding of the person's GI integrity and health at that point in their life. And then after treatment, you retest. Either the full shebang, you do like the parasitology again and everything, or you just do the microbiology, just the front page, including sensitivities. Meaning if we found bugs, you know, we found what they're sensitive to, what agents. So if we look at the stool test, <coughs> The interesting thing I found up front, one of the most amazing thing is um, over half the people who absolutely believe they've got a candida problem, in fact, haven't got candida at all. It couldn't be cultured in the stool test, so they couldn't grow it from the stool, and they couldn't find any dead yeast in the stool either through microscopy. So the microscope picked up no dead yeast, and the culture picked up no live yeast. And yet these people were on a candida diet for two, five, or ten years. I mean, that's crazy. Why would you do that for? Why would you be on a, on a treatment where you don't need that treatment? Right? So that's the first thing I've, I've noticed, is that half the people don't have a candida problem. And then what about the, what about the other half? You know, If they haven't got candida, uh, what are they going to have? Well, in many cases, they've got a lack of beneficial bacteria. They haven't got enough good bugs there. They may have had candida, and they've you know, got rid of it perhaps with the diet or treatment they were on. But then why do they stay on the diet? When they started to improve, why didn't they test at that point to see you know, what they had? So lack of beneficial bacteria is coming up in about 60%, I would say, easily of test results that we see. A complete lack of good bacteria. They couldn't culture them. They couldn't find them. This is especially so with people who feel overall crappy. You know, they've got mood disorders, they can't think properly, they've got brain fog, <clears throat> they've got anxiety, they've got depression, they've got fatigue, they've got, um, you know, they've got joint problems, they've got muscle pain, they've got all these kinds of problems. Every single person I see, almost every single person with chronic fatigue syndrome, has got a very strong lack of beneficial bacteria. And in many cases, it was through too many supplements, too many medications, too many diet changes. You know, for many different reasons, have actually wiped out the good bugs. And this actually sets them back further and further. The emerging trend I see, disturbing trend in the last five to ten years, are parasites. Many, many stool tests now come back with parasites. Okay. And in this guy's case, fold that over, what can you see? 
look that way. You can see Blessed Sisters Homeless. Blessed Sisters Homeless. And look at here, sample one, many yeast. Sample two, many yeast. Sample three, moderate yeast. So this particular guy's got lots of dead yeast in two samples. And he's got moderate yeast in one sample. And he's got blasto, which is a parasite. So I would say about 20% of tests I see now contain this particular parasite, blastocystis. There are other kind of parasites I see as well. So the last several years, I've seen increasing amount of parasites in people. In the last several years, I've seen increasing amount of cases of lack of beneficial bacteria. Let's go further with the stool test. The other thing that I'm commonly seeing is problems with the pancreas. So the pancreas is an organ that sits between the stomach and the small intestine. About 90% of what it does is it produces enzymes and bicarbonate, you know, basically to sort of like change the pH of the contents of the stomach and to put into the lumen or into the small intestine to put digestive enzymes in there in an inactive form. Now they become activated when the stomach contents come down. Now there's a very important um, enzyme called elastase and I'm finding big problems with elastase with people so many people just don't have enough elastase anymore and this causes bloating it causes gas it causes like constipation or diarrhea it causes a lot of digestive problems so there are many reasons why elastase could be deficient in people <clears throat> one of the common reasons again is not chewing properly not, not eating the right kind of food too much stress and medications uh, and last days is a big problem because if you've got a problem with the pancreas then you're going to have a major problem really with properly breaking down food and absorbing and digesting it and it's going to cause major fatigue and mood disorders and also it's going to cause it's going to allow the bowel the small bowel to have an explosion and overproduction of you know of bad bacteria including candida so you need to have very good stomach and pancreas um, if you want to have good levels of beneficial bacteria and good absorption and digestion. So if you put good gas, you know, fuel, or petrol we call it, into the, into, the, into the engine and combustion works properly, then the output should be outstanding and should have a very, very good delivery of power to the wheel, from the engine to the wheel, okay? So the wheel, in my case, is my hands and arms and brain function, okay? It's the end result of the combustion. But in many people's cases, they're tired. They just haven't got the power anymore, no energy. The most important commodity, in my opinion, for good health is vitality, it's energy. It's a fantastic commodity that allows you to think properly, have good memory, to have good moods, and to have the ability to do anything you want in your life without feeling like crap. So remember, good food doesn't always equate to good, healthy life because it depends what's happening on the inside to turn the good food into good energy. Right. And the stool test will often reveal where the problems in the engine are, like a diagnostic aid. And the other thing we're commonly finding in stool test results is inflammation, low levels of inflammation. So I used to see this in people with inflammatory bowel disease, but now I'm seeing a disturbing trend of more people with low levels of inflammation that haven't got inflammatory bowel disease. And this can come again about through parasites and through poor levels of beneficial bacteria, through poor dietary choices and through stress. We're also seeing immune dysfunction. There's an antibody called secretory IgA. And sometimes we find this IgA level to be really high or really low. <clears throat> really low, we find it in depleted people who've been sick for a long period of time. Low vitality. Really high, we see it in people who feel real bad in their physical body or in their brain, pain, aches, discomfort, mood disorders, all kinds of things. The immune system has an incredibly powerful effect on how you think, how you feel, and your energy level because immunity influences many different processes in the body. Immunity is not just about killing colds and viruses and stuff like that. Immunity is also about inflammation because immunity drives the inflammatory response up or down. And inflammation is not just only about pain. Inflammation is the seat of all disease. You talk to someone who's expert in chronic health and they'll tell you the number one thing to stop if you, you know, don't want to get sick is inflammation. 
And what else have we got here? We've got the short chain fatty acids, another page on the stool test. So the short chain fatty acids are byproducts of basically fermentation. So when food ferments properly, these acids are produced and they feed the colon. So they allow healthy levels of good bacteria to develop. So people with very poor levels of short chain fatty acids often end up with very bad health problems long term. So anyway, there's more things on the stool test. We haven't got all day here to talk. I've got my beehives to attend and I've got some weeding to do in the veggie garden. Um, so points I'm trying to make is stool testing is a very valid way to discover you know, what's wrong with you. You can go to ericbacker.com if you live in the States particularly and you can actually authorize a test yourself. If you go to my lab test page, you can rig up direct labs. You can easily do this yourself. You don't even need to see me if you, if you don't want to see me. The Kanzida dietary supplements, supplements work beautifully off the stool test. Many, many test reports I've got now pre and post treatment have shown me that Kanzida remove is very, very good in helping to clear the body from the dysbiotic flora, so the bad bacteria, to take the parasite numbers right down and to get rid of candida. So have a think about the candida formulations if you've done stool testing or you want to clean up the gut because they certainly do work. So I hope that explains a little bit about stool testing for you and that you've got a bit more of an insight into the importance of it and also the trends that I'm starting to see with this particular test that are coming out. Thanks for tuning in.